And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to race number 22 of season 5 of the Oreo Truck Series. We get ready for the running of the International Motor Racing Research Center 400. We're here at our third row course stop. This is Watkins Glen. And for the first time here in the NSA Studios booth, co-commentating with me is Derek Reed. Derek, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Seth, for having me out here today. Actually, this is my favorite road course. It's uh, actually mine too because it's uh, the closest track to me. It's actually the first race I ever went to, so I got a soft spot in my heart for this track too. This kind of a road course, we've had some great racing when we went to Infineon and when we went to uh, Champs Elysees, but now we're coming here to this kind of a track. What are you looking to see happen? Well, I don't really do NR2003 on Watkins Glen, so I don't know how the racing is here a lot. But I sure hope is that it's not like NASCAR the game when everyone wrecks in the first turn. Yeah, and we're gonna have not to see. A fest. We're gonna have to see if that's gonna be the case because I think out of uh, all the turns here, that's the one that's really seen as the trouble spot of this track. So we'll see if these drivers can get through there in one piece here today. On the pole for this race is going to be Hayden Klein. He's really had a lot of hard luck come his way in the last few races. Currently finds himself mired down 21st in points alongside of him, Charles Jackson. Those two both really, I guess, kind of looking towards getting a wild card spot with victories now. Then you got Mason Wood making what I believe is his fourth career truck series start here today. He's going to line up in third place alongside of our winner from last week at Kansas, Trent Dunham, who very well today, if he could pick up a second win, he could end up getting a wild card position as well. So out of those four, who are you looking here at the front to possibly win today? Uh, well, Trent Dunham could be one of the favorites because he has a real, wait, Trent Dunham fourth. Yeah. He has a getting really often good win in Kansas for his return, and he's got some momentum on his side. And also, I noticed that some road courses you, it's really hard to pass. So Hayden Klein might be in a good seat today. Yeah, Trent Dunham uh, has a little bit of road course history too. Back in season four, he ended up winning a truck series event at Hidden Valley, which was another tricky road course. So he's got that experience under his belt. Could get two wins in a row here. We're going to have a possible points battle coming into today's race. Stephen Pollard, the third, and Danica Shirley, two rookies atop the point stands right now, both separated by only seven points. We may see Sean Galligan, who is a total of 14 points, come into the picture, but. Right now, it looks like it's going to come down between Stephen Pollard III and Danica Shirley for the points battle today. Stephen Pollard III, really, he's been doing a tremendous job. I think he's had three straight top five finishes. Right now, what do you think? Here at Watkins Glen, is this going to be where he's going to get a pretty poor finish, or is he going to be able to keep up that consistency? It all depends on where you start. And what's really good about a teammate having good momentum is that you can cheer on your own. And even though you might not have the best luck like the rest of your teammates, like me, I drive the 6 and I haven't had much luck as a 99. So. Yeah, there you go. So uh, we're going to have to see what happens here today. As we've gotten the command to fire the engines, Pace Car is going to lead these cars around this rather long road course. It'll give us plenty of time to be able to show you the starting lineup for today's race. A lot of drivers here starting at the back of the pack that come in running well in points. Big question will be, will that be a factor into possible point shakeup after today's event? As here is your starting lineup for today's race at Watkins Glen. Under the green flag, Hayden Klein, Charles Jackson, your 
starting double wide here. It's going to be interesting to see what they do in that first turn, as you alluded to there, Derek, is getting ready to go green. Here we go, green flag waving. They're heading down for that first turn. Let's see how they do. See how badly they wreck. Wow, they went three wide back there, and that was back around Alex Tanker's machine. I'm not too confident about them getting through here. The way they were racing just a moment ago there. Oh, there goes the 45, and they're wrecking. Oh, car flips over. Oh, whoa, my goodness. Big pile up. There must be at least 20 cars involved in this one, as it was Seth Cole who flipped over. Jeez. And I thought David Runeman's wreck was bad. There's Dylan Poteet. He's involved. Seventh in points. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more drivers who are doing well in points involved. And there's smoke coming out of the back of the points Stephen leader. Stephen Paul is the third. Yep. Points leader involved in the first wreck of the day. Wow. No front end. That just blew the point standings wide open. There's Rod. It stinks Houston. that I'm not up there. Rod Houston, Kyle Sosnowski, there's Barney Ward, there's the car I saw get out of shape first off was uh, Luke Walker, but something happened further up ahead of him with that car I believe, Tony Blazer, he's pretty badly damaged, oh, whoa, what was Maggie Vaydarbu doing there, I think she hit the steel guardrail, that's a lot of damaged cars right there, is they're all going to line up behind the pace truck, Hayden Klein the leader, but I'm trying to see who else was involved in these incidents here. There were a lot of cars there. There's Margaret Mason. She's involved. Dylan Poteet, as we mentioned. Anthony McCurry's on pit road. Bob Jones has damaged. Matthew Rodriguez, fourth in the standings involved. There's Citadino, Chambers. There are a lot of front runners involved in this. we got to look back at a replay of this huge wreck that puts under the caution for the first time here today at Watkins Glen. Well, here's a look at what happened in the very first corner. And this was up just inside the top 10. So that's how close to the front this wreck took place. And I'm not even really sure who's going to make the initial contact here. Looks like it could have been. Oh, yeah, the 43 of Henley went up into Tony Blazer and then gets into Matthew Rodriguez. And then it's just on from there. And unfortunately... There's tire barriers on both sides, and it just closed up the track, and everyone just came piling in. There's Seth Cole getting involved. Sean Galligan gets a piece of it. And then here's where Seth Cole's going to flip over, I think. He's going to get nailed by somebody. I'm not sure who. Can't really see past the billboard there, but someone's going to clobber the 13, and it was the 31 of Dylan Poteet. Dom Caps just... That's what I was thinking. That was what I was thinking. But at first, you can't see with that billboard in the way. Yeah, there's uh, James McLeod. He gets a piece of it. Derek Reed on that inside line drives through the grass to get through. That was a nice miss there. Emilio Navarrete, he's involved. That's one, two. I think that's two of the Hendrick cars. Maybe more. There were more cars just slid into this. There's Ryan Acosta, Dylan Young, Margaret Mason, Eric Burton. Jake Rogers. Was that three cars? Was that three cars that flipped over at the same time? That could have been. I, I know Seth Cole flipped over, and I think there were a couple other cars that got airborne. I think Seth Cole's was the only one that actually flipped over onto its roof there in the 13, but a few other guys saw, did get airborne. I saw Sanoski flip. Seven car of Sosnowski? Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Where is Sosnowski? I didn't see that, so... Good catch on your part. Let's see here. Who hits him? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. That was uh, Rod Houston who nailed him right there. So you're right. Second car flipping over here. and That's got to be a good 20 to 25 cars involved right there because that wreck happened right up at the front of the field. But a nice job by quite a few drivers actually getting through that. With minimal to no damage, but quite a few damaged race cars here involved in this event. But we also had another incident take place further up. We're going to have to look at that. Something with Maggie Vedarvu and possibly Margaret Mason. Well, here's what happened to Maggie Vedarvu. This was coming through the bus stop here, and Maggie Vedarvu just messes up the turn, hits the steel guardrail, comes back up the track, and 
right into Jake Rogers and Eric Burton. That is hard, hard hit for those drivers right there. That's really hard, especially for Watkins Glen. Yeah, I mean... And they're not even going that fast. No, not at all. And the unfortunate thing is, most of the time here at Road Courses, they don't have those safer barriers installed. And Eric Burton, Maggie Vidarvi, that's just hard licks for those drivers. And we're actually being told that Eric Burton, due to the fact that he was involved in this and never came around to finish one lap, his pit stall is before the start finish line. He's not even going to get scored for this race. So we're going to have to unofficially score him in 42nd place. That's a tough break for the 33. Ow. I don't think I've ever even heard of that happening, and that's just a tough break for him, especially when he comes in 14th in the points, too. He had an opportunity to get inside the top 10 today, as did several other drivers involved in this, this wreck here. Anyway, we're going to head back to Green Flag Racing here. Our first caution of the day, a big one here. The starting stages here at Watkins Glen. Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Hayden Klein is currently the leader. And uh, as you said, Derek, at the start of the program, the starting position really is key here. And apparently that was big for a lot of these guys who started up front. They were able to avoid that big wreck. Yeah. So Hayden Klein's the Good. leader. Charles. Yeah, a big one at Watkins Glen. Uh, sorry, go. Hayden Klein is going to be the leader. Second place is going to be Charles Jackson. That's Mason Wood, Trent Dunham, Nick Eggleston. That's the top five. The green comes back out here on lap four of nine. We're nearing halfway. Then it's Dollarton, Keselowski, Richard Johnson, Sean Henley, and Felix Harris. That completes the top ten. Is There's a good battle going on here. That's between Richard Johnson, Carter Keselowski, Sean Henley, and there goes Keselowski around in Henley. And just like that, the caution is going to come back out. Another big one. Oh, the caution didn't come out. What? They did not wave the caution. The green is still on on the lights here. After an incident just inside the top 10, and they did not throw the yellow flag. I remember something like that that happened at Talladega. Yeah, I did too. Whoa, flip. Nick Eggleston. He just messed up that turn, and now he's going to slide up almost in front of Christopher Martin. That was a great save there. And still, we are green flag racing. I don't know how they decided not to throw that caution flag. I can't either. Meanwhile, Mason Wood, in only his fourth start, maybe four is a lucky number for the fours. He is right behind Hayden Klein. We've got to quickly document who were out of the race after that incident. Surprisingly enough, the only drivers who retired were Margaret Mason, Kyle Sosnowski, Rod Houston, Maggie Vedarbu, Dylan Pote, Anthony McCurry, Seth Cole, the points leader, Stephen Pollard the third. And Eric Burton actually is scored. I thought he wasn't going to be scored, but they did score him in 40 seconds. So at least they got something right here, even though they didn't throw that caution flag. But right now, it's a four-car breakaway here. Hayden Klein, Mason Wood, Trent Dunham, and Charles Jackson. Mason Wood, the only driver here with the limited amount of experience. What do you think with him racing up here with these three veterans? Mm, might be a little tough task for him, considering he has... One of the people that won at a road course right behind him. Yeah, absolutely. And Trent he's got Dunham. a pocket truck. No doubt about it. Yep. Trent Dunham right there. He's got to be looming large. There's a good battle going on back there around Sean Galligan's machine. There he is. He's still inside the top ten, even though he was involved in that first incident of the day. He's up in the ninth position. And now about to get a challenge from that from Dom Caps in the 24. Looks like Galligan's gonna keep that spot though as Galligan's heading for Pit Road. The two is coming to Pit Road, obviously for that damage he had. His teammates also there. They may be making some pit stops here. Are they making, they are, they are making some green flag pit stops. So this could definitely shuffle the field. Whoa! Nick Eggleston. Right in front of the leaders too. That was close. Now, did they throw the caution for that? They probably should have. I didn't see them. I didn't see the caution. Trying to look at the lights here to see if they did throw the yellow. We get a good look at light right now. No, we're still green flag racing. He disappeared as soon as they got in, he got in view. Good point. 
Nearly had the leaders collected in something here though, which would have been absolutely crazy and definitely played a big outcome in the finish of this thing. But we're starting to see now that drivers are having to make pit stops during this run. What do you think? What kind of strategy would you try playing out here? How long would you go before pitting? I know road courses are supposed to be the earlier you pit, the better off you are. So I don't know what these guys, yep. Yep, looks but like they're taking your track. advice. They're all coming. It's feeding time at the zoo. Klein, Wood, Dunham. Anybody going to try and gamble and stay out an extra lap? Looks like one driver is. That's Margaret Mason. Isn't that Margaret Mason? That yep. is. I think she's actually a lap down, though. So she's not going to really be a factor into a battle for the lead here. It's like Derek Reed, Colin Welty. They're currently on pit road making their pit stops. Take a look here at this uh, possible battle off pit road. See what all the leaders are going to do here as far as their pit stops are concerned. Two tires or four tires. What are they going to decide? Because we've only got three laps to go now. And it looks like Hayden Klein, everybody's going to go with two tire stops. So apparently they think they can make it on just one tank of fuel. Whoa, little jump there on the 17. I wonder what would happen if Ron Fazara was still driving these. I'm not really Probably wrecked sure. someone. I mean, that, that was a tough break too for Ron Fazara having to be replaced because he was actually doing really well, getting good runs in the four truck and doing well over in the Snickers Cup series. But Mason Wood though, he's done actually a really good job since stepping in there in that four team as well. He's got a top ten back at Richmond and doing very well right now. Maybe, keep fingers crossed, but maybe could pick up his first career truck series win here today. That'd be something good for at least someone in that truck. Aiden Klein right there in 17 though, I'll tell you what, he has just basically stayed out in front all day. He did have the benefit of that one caution to keep him out in front, but then when it came down to crunch time with green flag racing, he really has turned back all challengers and he's doing a great job right now. He's got quite a lead over Mason Wood right now too, and we've got two laps to go. And I Ryan think, Acosta. I think Ryan Acosta actually bet was just scored for leading a lap as he stayed out an extra lap, so he'll get some bonus points there at least, but probably not going to get a great finish. Is we got two laps to go now? If you're Hayden Klein, what do you got to do? Because you got a slower car up ahead and Jake Rogers. Defense, more defense, and more defense. We have to see if he can do a lot of mirror driving here. As these pit stops took place and we're nearing the final lap, let's give you the top 10. Hayden Klein's the leader, Mason Woods second, Trent Dunham now third, Danica Shirley, who we are, have received word due to Stephen Pollard the third's problems, is actually now the new points leader. She's fourth, Charles Jackson fifth, and it's Jacob Cook sixth, seventh Dom Caps, Alex Tanker eighth, ninth Chris Dollerton, and Sean Galligan is still in the top 10, even with that damaged race car as Matthew Rodriguez blows up. I thought I saw someone blow up in the bootleg. Yep, that was the Matt Rod machine, fifth or fourth in the points actually, so that's a tough break for him. And now the gap between the 17 and the 22 starting to close up as the white flag's in the air. One more lap for Hayden Klein and he may be able to pick up his first career Oreo Truck Series victory. Oh boy, that gap is closing up big time now. I almost wonder if he may end up encountering the 22 at that bus stop, and that would not exactly be the place to try and make the pass. Let's see if he can make short work of the 22. This is big right here on the final lap. This is a big opportunity for Mason Wood to close up some distance. Here comes Klein. He's going to go to the inside of Jake Rogers. Mason Wood's, though, getting a run on him. Here they come. Let's see what's going to happen. Will he dive bomb? Oh, he overdrove it. He overdrove it. Hayden Klein overdrove the corner and has lost the lead to rookie Mason Wood. On the final lap. What a costly mistake by Hayden Klein. And now with Mason Wood with Trent Dunham on his back bumper. Can Dunham make any kind of a move? Dunham's right there. Here they come, behind the slower car of Jake Rogers. Can Trent Dunham make any move to the inside on Rookie Wood? Mason, uh, Mason Wood, I can't even talk right now. That's off the final turn, and only its fourth start. Mason Wood wins in the Oreo Truck Series. 
Yay! Capitalizing on a mistake, Mason Wood. And that was huge. The caution title. <laughs> what perfect timing. They didn't throw the caution for at least three different incidents when it should have come out, and now who knows what they threw the caution for to finish this race. Probably someone on pit road forgot how to turn the car on. Quite possible. But Mason Wood, regardless of the fact that it ended on the caution or on the green, he is the winner here today, his first career. Oreo Truck Series victory, and I'm actually looking back, I think that's actually his first career NSRA victory as well, so what a debut it's been, what a couple of weeks it's been for the career of that driver in the four. Wow. Oh. Four start. He wins. It's Ron, Ron Sanjara's first fourth start in there. I believe he got turned by Emilio Navarrete. I think you're actually right. Wow, what a finish to this race. Derek, I want to thank you for joining me for this. Thank you for having me here. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to my part of the group today. Also, be sure to subscribe to Derek's channel. I'll put the link to it in the description. Mason Wood, the victor today. Danica Shirley's top five gets her the points lead back for the first time since Phoenix. And we will see you guys next time here on the NSR Sports Channel, Offline Racing at its best.